One of the reasons that people want to learn yoga is to get over all of the obstacles that are holding them back. But holding them back from doing what? From becoming the best version of themselves. That's what your obstacles hold you back from. And this is what people have been sold as an ideal. It is uh, this which is called self-actualization. You may have heard the word. It was invented by the humanist psychologist Abraham Maslow. Before that, psychology was uh, inhuman. They thought that humans were just like animals, that we didn't have, we had the same needs as animals. That is what psychology thought before Abraham Maslow came along and said that human beings have a different set of needs and he created a hierarchy of needs and this pyramid is valid until today. A lot of people use it in psychology and on top of that pyramid is something called self-actualization. It sounds uh, quite vague when I heard the word, I didn't know what the meaning was. But the meaning is very simple. It means that human beings are able to control themselves. And they are able to push certain behavior away so that they can finally get to a place where they start behaving in a more ideal fashion and they behave uh, more uh, yeah, in a more evolved manner. And so they can continuously evolve and reach a stage finally where they are self-actualized whatever they had idealized about themselves like I will be earning a certain amount of money, I will be uh, having a certain kind of relationship, I will have a certain kind of health, I will have a certain kind of social circle, I will have whatever you have idealized when a person reaches there the result is supposed to be that the person will be happy that's the theory. So there are certain people who claim to be self-actualized and they are now working for a, a cause which is bigger than themselves. Like Elon Musk is trying to send people to the moon and uh, make uh, clean energy and uh, reverse climate change and whatnot. Akon is, uh, has created Acoin and he's helping people to get rich in Africa and he's also helping them uh, with electricity He's helped almost the whole continent with it. So, people are doing something larger than themselves. And that's called self-actualization because now they have reached their ideal. And it is supposed to bring them a lot of happiness. And yet, you see, a lot of them do not enjoy good health. And a lot of them pop off from anxiety. as you, And a lot of them even commit suicide. So, you have to wonder whether self-actualization is all that it's made out to be. When you finally hit it and you say, oh, I have reached my goal, then there is a big, um, there is a big calm where nothing happens and that calm is called meaninglessness. Okay, so the meaninglessness phase comes in everybody who has been self-actualized. Which is why yoga has a much more uh, comprehensive uh, definition of self-actualization. And yoga says this, uh, that the only thing that is a problem is your own thought, nothing else. This is one of the postulates before you understand what is yoga self-actualization, right? Yoga self-actualization is known as Samadhi. So this is also reaching an ideal state, just like, but the ideals are slightly different. Here the person is using the mind as a tool, they are honing their mind, their intellect and their thoughts. They are honing their thoughts, they are controlling their thoughts so that they can reach a certain uh, consistent behavior and then cash in on the fruits of that and finally it's supposed to make them happy. So they are indeed seeking pleasure. They are looking for something which is, it's a demand that they be constantly happy. It's a demand that they enjoy only pleasurable states of being. It's basically a drug addiction, okay? So 
you go and then you use your mind in such a way now imagine let's say it's a simple thing like you want to get admission in a certain college and it's a very difficult college to get into let's say that this is your situation in life let's see the two ways in which people would handle it if a, a humanist psychologist or a person who follows that philosophy the western philosophy what will they do they'll um, gather all of their resources they will set their goals they will break the goal down into small parts and they'll start acting on each part every day and they finally get there with a lot of effort they will finally make it through to that college and at the end of it they will expect to feel pleasure but all they can feel is exhaustion they just feel ah oh, i made it and i'm trying they're trying to feel happy but it's not coming this has happened to so many people is not funny okay that happened to me also because i bought into this philosophy this is what we've been taught everybody has taught you this that this is going to happen i made a lot of money i made a lot of money i got married to a very beautiful woman i was living like the ideal life at least by my standards and i was just exhausted tired and just not interested now to go on another wild goose chase right to make more goals all i wanted to do was have a drink at that point all right so that's what self actualization looks like in practicality sounds very nice on paper okay so that's one way to do it now here's another person who's trying to get admission into the same college who has a thought tug at her or him that this is urgent and we got to do all of these things and this person is practicing a certain secret meditation okay which is allowing him or her to disregard the tug of thoughts have you seen thoughts tug you right then you can't resist that thought then you go go along with it and that is self actualization route where you say okay i've got to act upon this now this is a big problem right so that's really not how i solve my problems anymore in my life if you've noticed things just happen around me um, those of you who live with me you know this that everything is done effortlessly without any struggle whatever it is whether it's earning a living whether it's getting stuff to work or whether it's whatever it is it's all done not by my thought what do you think is running the show here if not thought because the person who has developed this meditation learns to disregard his or her thought okay so there's one thought which comes that says oh you have to get into this college and it's very rare and you really have to put a lot more effort than you're now putting this thought comes it tugs and when it tugs this person says oh i got tugged by the thought let me come back to thoughtlessness and they come back into this quietitude and sit in this very quiet place and they just relax and then what happens allow the body to do what it wants to do because you have no thought your body will do something you will get into the college you will write out application you don't have to think about it your body does all of these things the body can be trusted to live your entire life this is the main difference between the westerners and the yogis the yogis trust their body the westerners they trust only their mind they say descartes said it you think therefore i think therefore i am that's what he said right so your very identity is with your mind when you buy into that philosophy but when you consider yoga philosophy it's saying i think i i don't think therefore i'm not that's the difference between yoga philosophy and western philosophy i think therefore i am and i don't think therefore i'm not so when you say i'm not then there's nothing to do whatever is there will do whatever it is this body is built for stimulus response right will this body not respond to stimulus it does but you 
force the body to respond to your thought instead of stimulus. And then what's happening? The body rebels. Body doesn't appreciate it. Body says, what the hell, man? And it produces forces in the opposite direction. Whichever direction you want to go, it produces forces in the opposite direction. You're fighting yourself all the time. Now you're trying really hard, right? Some scarcity has come into your mind, right? Some scarcity comes into your mind. Say so something is there. Then that thought tugs on you, okay? So, for example, somebody came, uh, told me the other day that uh, I had to go somewhere for work. And so my husband said, shall I go to Goa and enjoy with my friends? I said, okay, but now I feel that he is enjoying without me, so he really doesn't need me. Don't laugh because this is very common. Okay? And she's saying this. And then, so what has she given into? She's given into that thought. And the body, her body knows what it should do. Her body knows that she should relax and just do her job and come back. And everything will go smoothly. Her body knows this. Her body is on the job. It's doing the job, right? And you're telling, no, you're not doing your job, body. You should do this. But he's like, huh? You know? Why should I listen to you? And the body rebels. And it creates all sorts of chemicals inside your body. Women feel this very acutely during their period. If they have spent 28 days rebelling against their body, on the day of the period it gives them a lot of pain. A lot of pain. And men also feel this. We also have cycles. But we don't realize. We have cycles of high sexual hormone and low sexual hormone. And on the days when we have the cycle of high sexual hormone, we get a lot of irritation inside our brain. Because then we, we don't know what to do, right? Because it's like all of these sexual feelings and then it becomes a frustration. But if you just let the body do what it has to do, you would have been having sex during that time. Things would have just worked out because it's stimulus response. There's nothing that is produced as a desire in your body that cannot be fulfilled by the body. There is nothing. But the body cannot fulfill your bloody mental desires. No other difference. If the body feels hunger, the body will go and feed itself. Any amoeba knows to do that. An ant knows to do that. Why can't you? People are struggling to make a living as if the body is not invested in preserving itself. If you would just learn to park your thoughts and not let them tug at you, tug at your body, and then you tell your body you're not doing a good job. This is what you tell your body. Every day when you become a slave to your thoughts, you tell your body that you are not doing a good job. And the body, poor body says, I don't agree. And it continues to do its thing. It powers through and tries to do its thing. Now, what is its thing, right? Waiting is a big part of fulfillment. And the body knows how to wait. Most of the time, the body is waiting. And in the right opportune moment, it acts. But we don't like waiting. Because patience is not important, you know. We should not have patience because we are in the era of instant fulfillment. As soon as you think it, you should have it from Amazon, whatever you want. If you have to wait four days now, you don't know what to do for those four days. You bite someone if it was allowed. Right? Yes or no? So, this is how people are ready. Like, just because it's not socially okay, they're not biting each other. Otherwise, it's a bit, right? So, today uh, my student Kunal got a thought that there are worms in cabbages and we have eaten cabbage and that's why I have bloating from yesterday. You have bloating because you've been forcing your body to do things. You've been forcing urgency upon your body when it really feels no urgency. 
Your body can never feel urgency. Even if someone's attacking you with a knife, it knows what to do. Your body just relaxes its way out of all that danger. Why do people, you know, when you have thoughts, that's when you freeze. If you don't have thoughts, your body just acts. What do you, what, you, you know about reflexes, right? You touch a hot iron and your hand comes back just like that. You blow on it. Or you would just immediately go and hold it under cold water. Cool down the tissue before it burns, right? How do you know this? Are you having any thought over there? Yesterday a scorpion came into our house. What did you do? Who froze and who acted? Not the person who was thinking. The person who came and hit it with a, with a shoe was the person who was not thinking. And the person taking selfies with it, I don't know what he was thinking. Right? Because the scorpion can put you in hospital. It's very tiny but it can put you in hospital. Okay? So anyway, coming back to Kunal's story. If his thoughts tugged in that direction, all he had to do was what? Not push that thought onto your body. Protect your body from your thoughts. This is what you'll not this is what meditation is. Protecting your body from your thoughts is meditation. If you protect your body from your thoughts, it will repair its flatulence by itself. You don't have to do anything. But if you start overthinking it, then obviously you are trying to impose your urgency on the body and it is going to rebel. It is going to create more gas for you. Okay? So whenever you get hurt, follow what your body wants to do. Whenever you get sick, follow what your body wants to do, not what your thought wants to do. Because your thought can get all sorts of anxiety. We are used to using this puny tool called thinking to solve all our problems, which is why they never get solved. You cannot use thinking to solve any problem. So what is the function of thinking? Why do we need it? When the body is fully capable of stimulus and response. Why do we need thought? According to yoga, you don't need it. It is the main distraction from living your life. Then why have we evolved the ability to think? Look, the thought is meant to be used by the body, not the other way around. You got it? And the body will use thought whenever it needs. When the body wants to make a calculation, it will use thought. When the body wants to invent a new tool, it will use thought. It will use thought. But you do not allow thought to tug at the body. That is disrespectful. It's like in India, we respect our parents at least in deed. I mean, when they are there, we won't smoke cigarettes. And you know, you, you won't, you or some people won't even sit with their legs pointing in their father's direction. Right? So, that's called some kind of reverence. Right? We need to maintain that kind of reverence towards the body. And this is the teaching of yoga. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at what, what happens then. Right? I'm going to read out some key differences between what you generally have been taught to do and what a yogi should do instead. So, controlling your behavior, that means controlling your body and you are trying to fulfill an ideal. In this, what you are doing, there is a deep demand for order in order to repeat pleasure and avoid pain. That's what your body is, uh, that's what your mind is doing. Your mind has a deep demand, it's a demand for pleasure, for consistent and repeated pleasure again and again. Not caring about whether the body is capable or wanting to give that pleasure, because the body has cycles of different sensations. Okay, The body is not dividing sensations into pleasure and pain. 
It's just stimulus and response. Stimulus and response. Something changes in the environment, I will adapt. Something else changes in the environment, I will adapt. The body is interested in just two things. Survival and reproduction, that's it. That's it. And reproduction, that too, only if there's a need. Otherwise, it doesn't even want to reproduce. Okay? So it just wants to survive as much as possible. This is all the body is interested in. It does not have any interest in pleasure. But we, the mind, has gotten used to this pleasure of uh, pleasure high of you know some kind of dopamine and oxytocin and you know various chemicals inside the brain producing that. So but, but when you look at it from the point of view of the body, there are no more feelings of pleasure or pain, only unjudged sensations. The body feels a sensation and it knows what response to give to that sensation. That's it. If it doesn't know, it will learn. It will do the wrong one and it will learn. And it will give the right one. You know this, right? You're going in the dark and the there's a steps. Uh, there are, there's a small flight of steps. You're going in the dark. Right? Immediately your body doesn't know where to put its legs because it can't see. Can't see where to put. But what does it do? It adapts, no? It goes tick, 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 tick. The leg feels all by itself. Unless you had the thought, oh no, what am I going to do now? Then, gone. Then you imposed urgency upon the body. Otherwise the body knows what to do. It will survive that. It will go through, right? I survived my uh, chronic illness by allowing my body to do what it has to do. Stimulus and response. Whatever it had to do, it did. And I came out of it. Not only that I come out of it, I pulled a couple of people out of it also. Who were not couple. At least five or six people I pulled out along with me. Because I was just following my body's stimulus response, I found the solutions. Body found the solutions. I didn't do anything. I did not interfere with my mind, imposing some kind of urgency on it. I didn't do that. Okay. So now your body is finding its way down the steps, right? So what is it doing? It's not judging the sensation as pleasant. Oh, now it's so unpleasant without these lights. No, it hasn't done that. It's immediately adapting. Right? That's what you need. So there are no more feelings of pleasure or pain, only unjudged sensation looked at from outside of knowledge. Because knowledge is useless. Knowledge is your mind's ideas of how things work. The body doesn't rely on any of that. Body takes real-time information and acts upon it. From a thousand nerve sensors. No, why thousand million billion nerve sensors? It's taking it out and it's creating connections and it's acting. It's a very complex thing, your body. But no, we don't have any respect for it. We think the body is dumb. If a body puts on weight, you know how much demand people put on the body to become thin? Are you mad? The body knows what it's doing if it's becoming fat. It's probably saving your internal organs from something by accumulating that fat. Just allow it to do its job. Don't bring your mental idea of let me visualize my ideal body like I, I should be looking like uh, with your jawal. Right? I want to break bricks with an egg in my hand. This is what I want to do. This is your demand. When your body is actually busy accumulating fat because it needs to do that. And you don't trust your body at all. Some demand on top of that. Right? One more demand. So, a deep demand for order in order to repeat pleasure and avoid pain. This is what you put on your body. Deep demand. Okay. Whereas the body has no demand for any order. Pain and pleasure are absent in the body's vocabulary. It's not there only. It's only sensations. Right. Pain and pleasure are absent and replaced by just raw sensations. That's the body's perspective. Can you see the difference mind and body? It's also the difference between West and East. This is the difference between West and East. Okay. But now, no longer, West has infected the East. The entire East, all the way to China. Hmm? Doesn't matter. So, everyone can learn. West, East, Center, everyone can learn. Now, the mind's 
identification is with its thoughts. So, if you don't think, then there is no mind, right? There is no you only. If you don't think, then where, oh, I think, therefore I am, right? That's the thing. But in a body, there is a complete absence of identification. The body does not see itself as separate from its environment. It's just one thing. It's bodying. It's being. The body is the being, but the mind is the becoming. It wants to become something. The mind is a human becoming, but the body is the human being. Because it's being one with everything. It's just being there. Okay? That's the difference. And then, the mind cannot respond immediately. Because it has to deliberate things before it responds, right? Because it has this ability to project the future, which the body uses sometimes. The body uses the mind to do quick calculations. You should allow the body to use the mind. If you are letting the mind to use the body, I mean, the mind cannot use the body because the mind is not superior to the body. Okay? So, the mind cannot use the body, but it tries to interfere. If you are encouraging that and that you, you think yourself actualizing by doing that, then there is no bigger idiot than you. Okay? So, what does the, how does the body respond? Every part of the body is sensitive and responsive. Every part. If a fly comes to your eye, your eyes will close. Right? If something bites you on your hand, your hand will scratch like this. You don't have to think about it. It's already protecting yourself. If you are feeling any pain, it will adjust itself. Just by itself. Right? But when has the body been crushed and gotten into chronic disease and gotten into stress and all that? When has that happened? Only when you have imposed the mind's urgency on the body. Otherwise, no. Your thought urgency has been imposed on your body. That's why. It's kind of stupid. Now we have to meditate to come out of stupidness. Right? Stupidness is normal. And to be normal is enlightened. Samadhi. This is how it is. Okay? So I'm going to teach you how to be normal. I'm not going to teach you how to be superman. This is normal. A normal is super. Our body is super. It can do all sorts of things. You've seen some people's body on Instagram doing super things. What do you think those guys are thinking before they do all those flips? You think they're having a thought process? I think it's kind of risky to hit my head here. Then he'll definitely hit his head, right? When you're climbing up a steep mountain, what do you tell everyone coming with you? Don't look down. Look up. Because no, that idiot will start thinking of falling. When he starts thinking of falling, he's going to restrict the body. Like, don't step here, don't step there. And then he will slip and fall and die. That's how people die. Right? Okay. So, when, when you are doing the self-actualization instead of Samadhi, then what are you doing? Your consciousness is very high and it can override the senses sometimes. So, senses are giving information and you are saying, no, this is more urgent, do this. Senses are like, come on man, we need to digest food. No, don't digest food now. Think about how we can get even with this person for speaking badly about me. Somebody is wrong on the internet, don't digest food now. Right? And this is what people do. Oh, you bhakt, oh, you that, oh, you whatever, libtard, librandu. And people are like... Oh. The single worst thing for India's health has been the political situation right now. Because it's polarizing. And when it's polarizing, people are losing their health. Because their mind is resisting the body. Yeah. So it's all about consciousness overriding the senses. Right? But if you leave the body to itself, the senses bring data, but consciousness is completely absent in order to filter or modify it. You got it? Okay. So, I hope I am not going to... Uh, uh, I mean, it is a complicated subject, but I hope you are understanding it, right? Okay. Nobody in the history of um, yoga teaching has explained this cleanly. 
okay you've had people who tried to explain it but they didn't have the articulation to and i am standing on the shoulder of giants i have had this explained to me by baba ji himself mahavatar baba ji himself only he could explain it to me otherwise even i had pretty much my mind in control of everything and i was trying to self actualize until i met baba ji then he said don't self actualize don't do that ugly thing you are ruining your body he said i have maintained my body for 1500 years by not interfering with it it has just been going on stimulus response stimulus response recovery learning adjustment stimulus response and my body has learned so many things that now you guys call me superman then he made a drawing for me and in that drawing he drew on the sand with a stick and in that drawing there's a cliff like this and there is a gradual slope on the other side of the cliff and a man has walked up the cliff and he's standing on top of the cliff and the people standing on this side of the cliff they can't see the slope on the other side by which he walked up they cannot imagine climbing up the steep side of the cliff and they're saying superman to this guy i said remember this image that as you progress in yoga people will find your abilities to be superior and they will start worshiping you if you give them a chance they'll make a temple for you but please avoid that shit and tell everybody about the slope side tell everybody about the slope side that's what you told me and i'm telling you now there is a slope side okay that's how you become great not by self actualization self actualization are the guys climbing up the steep side of the slope putting in their big axes and some of them are falling and dying instead you go on the other side and slowly walk up it may take you like 10 years but you'll get there you become very self actualized more than you can imagine the body wants to the human body is very special it has more nerves than any other animal inside the brain it has more neurons than any other animal any other animal that's saying something right and all of the stupid people you know have the same amount of ne- neurons as you so don't look down on them understand that their bodies are worthy of reverence no matter what their religion no matter what their gender no matter what the condition of their body whether it's got cancer or not the body the body is worthy of reverence and maintain that reverence towards everybody's body to every body every body okay anybody everybody maintain reverence towards the body that's where the people are that's who the people are they aren't their mind as you've been taught don't get confused intellect is a trigger for ambition for the mind but do you know that the body is more ambitious than the mind the mind says i'll live to 100 the body says i'll live to 1000 but we kill it we kill the body if we don't interfere with the body it lives beyond 1000 my teachers living proof okay and everyone laughs at me why because they want to be small they don't want to grow and i'm proving every day with my strength my physical strength and my agility that even people in their 20s can't match up because i'm not interfering with my body I kept interfering with my body till I was 30 38 39 I don't know till I was 39 I guess I kept interfering over the past 3 years I have been interfered with my body and it's been just self correcting itself and it's very ambitious you cannot even imagine the ambition of the body and your the biggest ambition that you can imagine is nothing compared to the ambition of the body okay so for body the intellect has withered for somebody on a path to samadhi the intellect has withered and been discarded as not useful right and in its place is untriggered ambition it doesn't have to be triggered by comparing yourself with others it's triggered by the stimulus and response and you don't know where it's going to go 
the body is ready for that okay is your mind being blown by what you're hearing okay if your mind is being blown by what you're hearing this is the time to hit share and share this knowledge with everyone but don't worry i'm going to give you more knowledge okay next high wear and tear of the body is because it resists the mind and therefore it leads to its ultimate demise <clears throat> digest this all of the illness that you have is because of your mind creating resistance in the body and what would be the proper way to handle that if you did not interfere you would have longevity and you would have balanced harmonious health your hormones would be in balance do you know what that means because if you have excess hormone also it's bad if you have less hormone also it's bad a lot of things in the body that need to be in balance and your mind is constantly throwing it off balance with its urgency you just allow it to balance okay finally emotions how does somebody on a self actualization trip balance their emotions by a constant mental narrative they have to balance it with a story with a mental narrative of who they are what they are going to achieve so there will there will be days when they feel what the shit am i doing and then they'll tell you how to overcome that they will think about the big picture they'll talk about the narrative the body just wants some sleep man you can't give the body some sleep when it's asking for sleep no i am going to burn the midnight oil ha 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 otherwise i won't make my upsc exams some narrative so you're trying to bring balance with this mental narrative to your emotions and so somehow you manage to maintain some kind of artificial high spirits and that exhausts you and it kills you right but emotional balance is an effortless result of inner silence remember this okay so now you know the difference between self actualization how it's looked at in yoga and how it's been looked at in the western world i think you need to tell everyone you know about this and recruit them into learning yoga because otherwise you're all going to be neurotic messes and that's a very sad direction to take your glorious body your ambitious body it's a very sad direction to it's like it's like being a giant and trying to fit into a rat hole you can't really do that stop fitting your glorious self which is your body which doesn't really care for the glory it only cares about stimulus and response and it cares not only about survival it's very very ambitious and it uses the mind when it wants to use it is a different state of being okay this state of being is achieved only with something called meditation and that meditation is what you have to learn and i will tell it to you open source and clear this is what the meditation is okay the meditation is so simple all you have to do and now you're very interested to listen i know all you have to do in the beginning you cannot find inner silence because it's not there it's no way to be seen so all you have to do is focus on something which is other than your thought for the time being until you find some silence when the thoughts stop then you'll find silence then you can focus on the silence until then you need something to focus on and that something should be continuous so that you can focus on it any time anywhere whatever you're doing it's a way to park your mind where to park your mind what is the continuous thing that you carry with you everywhere your breath that's why you need to focus on your breath got it so now you focus on your breath 
find out which parts of your body are breathing that you can clearly sense. And find that part of the body and start focusing on it. Everything will go well for the first 30 seconds. And then your mind will tug. Try it and see. I'm not going to say a word now for the next one minute, okay? In fact, I'm going to put my timer. I'm going to time you for the next one minute. And I want you, if you're watching this, to just close your eyes. It's going to be one minute of meditation, okay? Close your eyes and the timer starts now. Focus on your breath for one minute. That's it. Where was your mind when the bell rang? Was it on your breath? Was it on your breath? Okay. For few people, they are able to have that. They are able to disregard their thoughts. But you haven't got this habit of disregarding your thoughts. So you get into some thought. Something pulls you, some urgency pulls you. Right? You see how miserable the state of affairs is, right? Which is why you need to practice this. You start with 30 seconds. That's it. You can't do more than that. Okay. When you're able to do for a long time, just putting your mind on your breath. And here's the thing. When your mind wanders and every time you bring it back, you're training your brain, you're training your body to ignore the mind. You're finally showing respect to the body. Finally, finally, you're showing respect to the body. Okay. So with one minute, nothing happens. But still, it's progress. Still, you will feel an acceleration if you can hold your mind on your breath for one minute. Then increase the time, make it two minutes. At some point, will come. And not very far away. I'm talking about in the near future. And if you take my course and study with me, it will be much faster. Okay? But if you practice this, within the next five years at least, you will be able to constantly disregard your thoughts and allow the body to do what it has to do. You will become such a pleasant and beautiful human being. At the time, call me for lunch. I will come and have lunch with you. Because then, uh, it's a pleasure, a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you when you are that kind of person. It is so much fun to hang out with such a person because it's just beautiful. It's just like being in nature, okay, when you have such a person. So, start slow, start small, practice, get frustrated, come back and practice, come back and practice, come back and practice. And if you want to learn it formally, get in touch with me and I will teach you. I'm not here to keep this secret from people. I'm here to teach this knowledge which I got from my Siddha Guru who lives for who's lived for 1500 years using this technique. There's nothing secret about it. Now it's out in the open. But you know what? You think people are lining up to practice this? No! They're having too much fun self-actualizing. Alright? So for those who are tired of that, I can only teach those who have suffered and burnt their hands in self-actualization. Otherwise people will say, Who's this fakir? teaching me things, right? Who is he to teach me things? You know, people have taken class 
for me about Babaji because they read autobiography of a yogi. Yes, I went to Bangalore and a man sat me down and said, well, let me tell you about Babaji. I'm like, hmm. And I lived with Babaji for more than a year, man. So this is the state of affairs. Even if you give knowledge and you keep it open like this, you still need to do the work to be able to receive it. Giving it to have given. Now you have to receive it. Okay. So this has been a very long video. And um, if you've had the patience to watch till now, and if you want to learn yoga formally from me, get in touch. If you don't want to, just practice this. There's no secret here. You will get it. You have my blessings. Do it. Practice it. Get it and become a beautiful human being, become an ambitious human being, understand what is real ambition. It's not earning 500 crores. It's making the body, allowing the body to figure out its own ambition. It's not having a 10 year plan because the body already knows what to do. It's learning to trust yourself, learning to trust your body. Okay, that's what I'm here to teach. Okay. Thank you very much for joining me and I'm going to end this with an invocation to my Guru Mahavatar Babaji. Please close your eyes and join me to receive his blessings. Om Icha Kriya Jnana Baba Namaha Chakriya Gyana Baba Namaha Om Chakriya Gyana Baba Namaha